I was wondering what happens when you go through and upgrade your GPU while the computer is on. Well, in today's video, we're going to take a look at that and a couple other things, and we'll see just how much this computer can put up with. In the previous video about removing a CPU while the computer was on, some people suggested that I add a stick of RAM that was not there when it was initialized on boot. So, I think we should add a stick. Let's turn this sucker on. We've got our stick of RAM, and whatever that little showcase was of me rubbing my hands off was just trying to make sure that my hands were as dry as possible. I would hate to get electrocuted. So we've got a stick of RAM in there now. Well, interestingly enough, we've still got all of Windows working. The first upgrade that has not crashed the system. I'd be interested to see if it actually registers this as RAM. It's not initialized, so it's still going to register as 48 gigs. And my hypothesis is that since it's not initialized, it's really not looking for it, it's not really paying attention to the slot. So surprisingly enough, we didn't crash at all, and the RAM sticks all the way in there, and I'm really, really impressed. Oh yeah, and in today's video we also have a giveaway. Um, a company named AV Access has sent me a KVM switch, and this is, to explain it lightly, allows you to toggle between different computers. So if you have like an Xbox or something like that, and you just want to be able to toggle between the audio, microphone, etc., this will be for you. So stick around till the end of the video and we'll talk about how you can get this. Also, you can't actually, I should rephrase that. It's very difficult to get electrocuted in standard computer hardware. That's because you're dealing with voltages of like 12 to five volts. Basically, long story short, there's something called the Ohm's law, which basically says the more resistance, which your skin is pretty resistant from electricity, long as it's not wet, means that it's really hard to get electrocuted or zapped just because it's hard for electricity to pass your fingers. Now, if they're wet and you know, you lick the, the motherboard while it's on, especially where the CPU is, you might get a little tingle and I don't recommend that. But for the most part, you should be fine with just putting computers in and out. Now, the computer parts themselves will not have a fun time and there's a good chance that however many times in the future we do these episodes, something's gonna get broke. So I guess since this is on, we can move on to the next part. So the next thing you guys wanted to know is what would happen if you decided to remove the power supply. Now, this is a rather stupid request, but I'll actually change this up a slight bit so it's more entertaining for you all. First up, the power supply, if you just unplug it, obviously that sucker is just gonna shut off and it's not gonna be too much fun. But I was wondering what happens if we go through and remove the CPU pins or the motherboard pins while it's on and not the whole power supply. Because we saw, we know what's gonna happen with the drive. It's gonna probably behave the similar, at least, to what we had in the previous episode where we unplugged the SATA pin from it. So it would just crash and blue screen out. If we remove the, you know, basically anything other than on the motherboard connectors, we'll have similar results to what we had in the last episode. So in the interest of having something new and entertaining, let's go through and remove the CPU power pins from the power supply and off the motherboard and let's see exactly what happens. Oh, we've got, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but it's an F. F to pay respects to that CPU boys. Let's see what happens when we do the motherboard power pins, of course, while the system's on. And of course, if you have an idea, obviously go down in the comments and let me know. And so whenever we do the third installment of this series, your questions can be answered. Motherboard connector now. Obviously, my hypothesis is that this stuff is uh, tanking the system as well. I could say something like it's bad because I can literally hear the arm on the hard drive and the hard drive itself just die instantly when you pull that out. Um, yeah, guys. This is exactly what you'd expect with the power supply. 
I think people did want me to do power supplies, and I think this is pretty fair, taking it from both the CPU and the motherboard, both times it shut off faster than the computer did when I put it in my bathtub. In the last video, you guys recommended that we go through and remove the CMOS battery while it was powered on. And I just wanna make a couple comments. First off, my prediction is it's not gonna do anything. Now, why? Well, because the CMOS battery is responsible for keeping time while the computer is off. That is, when you unplug your whole computer and there is no power in the entire system, there's a little clock that runs and keeps track of the time. So if you really wanna know what I think is gonna happen, absolutely nothing, but I could be wrong. Let's find out. Now, the CMOS battery is plugged in on a little odd angle, so I'm gonna have to be careful because I'm gonna have to be able to do a screwdriver with this one. There's no other way I'm gonna be able to get to that. Step one, when putting metal in a computer, uh, make sure it's insulated. Now I can remove it. Let me remove it all the way. There you go, boys. The CMOS battery is removed. Now, I think it's taking a little bit of time, but as you can see, the time right now, at least when I started this video, this clock is off already, but it is. it did start at 6 p.m. on the 22nd. It's actually 8 p.m. here in the Eastern time zone. But interestingly enough, it didn't do anything. Now, I do wanna show what actually will happen though if you remove this and we turn the system off. What's gonna happen is, first off, I'm just gonna do two things. I'm gonna turn the system off, leave it plugged in, and then boot it back up. My guess is obviously the time zone is gonna remain the same, the time is gonna be perfect. But if we go through and we remove it and we unplug it, I think we're gonna have a different scenario. So let me go do that real quick. So as you can see, we've got the time here. I'm not even, I don't even know if I wanna go through and put the password in. But the time is just fine. It's exactly where we left it and pretty much the same amount of time has passed since I've gone through and done my video. But now with the CMOS battery out, Let's go through and unplug the system now. So let's shut this down and let's unplug the system. So the system has been entirely discharged and I expect when I plug this back in, the time is going to be obviously reset. I'd say even the CMOS might be reset altogether. I'm impressed. So. I actually am a little confused here because the CMOS battery is supposed to help keep track of the circuit and I think that there might be some capacitance still left in some of the some of the motherboard that kept the clock circuit running but for the most part I didn't really test it long enough but there you go in normal circumstances don't remove your CMOS battery because well duh you're gonna lose your clock and probably your CMOS config it'll be reset back to default settings. Now, before we get to the graphics card, I wanna add another hard drive while the computer's on. So the last time we unplugged the main system hard drive while it was on, so I think we should add another hard drive also while the system's on. So let me real quick grab one. First off, the SATA connector, which I am trying desperately not to get like zapped out. So interestingly enough, I think did the other one, it sounded like the other hard drive died the moment I plugged it in. Let me grab a SATA cable. Take our SATA cable and plug it right in. Feed this sucker through. So technically, this should be plugged in now. Be interested to see if, uh, it's gonna register up in uh, the format utility here. Yeah, absolutely not. But I'd assume if we rebooted the system, which we'll do real quick, it's gonna work just fine. So it looks like that drive is dead. Um, the one that I added? Check the, the BIOS real quick. But I've plugged it in multiple places and it looks like that one's dead. So I know we said something was gonna die and it looks like it's been my 500 gig hard drive. I, uh, yeah, don't think that's, that's kind of disappointing. We have to have the moment of silence for the, the fallen comrade. So it's time for the graphics card and a reminder, we've got a giveaway at the end of this video. So if you're interested in that, make sure you stay tuned. So 
what I want to do for this is I want to add another graphics card to simulate integrated graphics. I don't actually have a system that I can use at the moment to do integrated graphics just because I, I don't have any hardware. That's, these are all AMD systems. This is my only Intel system. And I don't want to use a, a nice computer to, to like ruin the graphics cards. So, well, yes, this is a nice computer. This is, has some problems as well. So let's go through and add another graphics card or upgrade our graphics card or remove it like we would with an iGPU and see what happens. I wasn't watching. It looks like that sucker is dead. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's just turn this on. So this graphics card is dead. Um, two reasons I know that. First of those is that uh, I touched this with my thumb, and while I didn't get like zapped or anything, I definitely could feel a tickle. Second of all, um, there was no light on this. I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but this is a fallen comrade now. So just a quick moment of silence for our fallen comrade. Um, I don't know what happened, and as I said, I'll restate what I said in the previous video. Likely when you go around and you start making contact with a bunch of those connectors and that SATA and on that SATA, not SATA connector, PCIe connector and the female and male PCIe connector, you're going to make contact in places it shouldn't and likely it fried something like a data pin and did not have a spicy time. So friendly reminder, don't try any of this at home. I'm so surprised in the last video we didn't have a single thing break and in this time we had two things break. I'm not too heavily disappointed because this graphics card did have some slight artifacting in the bottom corner. So I, while yes, this is a graphics card, um, it did have a little bit of artifacting as well. So who knows with the extra contact or whatever, it could have sent the card finally over the edge. So speaking of which, let's talk about this giveaway. So this is a KVM switch and this basically allows you to toggle between a bunch of different computers. Now back here, I actually have some servers. That's what I use these for. A lot of people make comments about, um, but no, these are actually some servers that I have. When I go through and I'm working on different computers, one of these is like my Minecraft server. If you ever played on my Minecraft server, I have one. It's private, it's whitelisted, but you are welcome to join down in the description. Um, there is the MySQL data server, which I use for a lot of my coding projects. And there's actually my web server over here that does all my websites and stuff, which if you go to my website right now, it doesn't exist. So stay tuned for that one. Um, but no, so like I use these to toggle between and then I can put them up on the TV. It is awesome. I've had this for about a week and I absolutely love it. So if you're interested in heading over and using this, um, there's three things you gotta do. First off, you gotta follow their Facebook. Uh, they sent me a Facebook link. You gotta make sure you follow theirs. Follow my Twitter, which is in the description. And then of course, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And I'd prefer, I'd, I'd like to know if you did that, of course, by commenting. So if you want to comment on this video, something like, actually let's comment something specific. Comment nothing other than toaster, and I'll know that's exactly what you watched this video for, to watch this computer toast. So subscribe and comment toaster on this video, very specific, and um, make sure you follow their Facebook page, and of course, follow my Twitter as well. And with that, I will mail this off. I'm also gonna throw in a couple other surprises that I've had, um, some other, like, make it a little bit bigger giveaway, but for other issues, I'm not allowed to say what I'm throwing in there. But make sure you, subscribe and do all that stuff and I hope to see you around in the next video. Have a wonderful day and I'm a little bummed out about this but if you want to purchase merch or something I'd, I'd really appreciate that. Heck I even bought um, a really nice hat. I don't even think it's on the merch store but I, I got a nice hat. Anyway y'all have a wonderful day and of course happy holidays. It's almost Christmas.